Welcome back. So we've talked now about some of the value adjustments and the color adjustments that are available in Photoshop. I want to dive now a little deeper into how some of those tools can be added to a few other options that are pretty powerful. Now, I'm going to go to a photo to demonstrate two or three ideas of ways that can be used. So if I wanted to have a shadow, let's say across this foreground of my snow right here, I could do that with the tools that we've already discussed. I could come in and just cut out a piece of this with my command J. And I could use my levels tool to darken that space, right? And then I could use some of my color adjustments and I could shift the, the temperature and the color where I want it to be. And I could start to um, say, okay, that's fine, but let me use, and we haven't talked about this yet but kind of, you've seen me using it, my little um, airbrush tool there that I could start to play with that edge, right? To make it not so sharp or however much I want that feather to be, right? So I've got, I've got some great options there that I could do with just the tools that we've talked about so far. Another way to accomplish that would be to draw a shape over the top of this or even paint a shape. Well, this will come into our painting a little bit, but I want to talk about it now. So remember when we talked about vector versus raster, here's a chance to use a vector. So I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm going to, I'm going to draw a shape. Now this is as if I have, I've created a vector over the top of this picture. And then what I can do is double click. Well, first off, just make sure you're set to shape and not path. If you set it to path, it's not gonna give you any controls. You're gonna be wondering what's going on. So set it to shape. I've got my, some of my history there. I can decide if I want it to be just an outline, which I don't want it to just be an outline, right? Um, and I can decide how thick I want that outline to be. So don't worry about this other vector stuff right now. For right now, just set the stroke, which is the outside line, to be clear, which is this little red line through it. And my fill line, I'm going to just make a color. Okay, now once I've done that, I can go over here and I can double click on the shape inside and it's going to say, what color do you want it? And it allows me to change the color to whatever I want it to be. I can even click some of the colors that I have in my snow. Now what I want to, this was just all preliminary to show you what I want to show you. I want to show you the multiply tool. So I could use darken, but color burn, some of these other options, but really multiply is this beautiful tool that allows me to overlay a dark color and then it kind of sits it in, um, does some, some wizardry. We won't talk about all the reasons why it's working, but it darkens everything into the space while still maintaining some of the value uh, that's happening within the piece. So this is a great tool to be able to then come and throw shadows over places where I want. I could even, if I wanted to, show, let's say this was going to hit up on to this stack and come all the way down and come around that way. I could do that. And then I could multiply that down and I could start to create shadows that are happening. Now I can also, um, if that's not dark enough, I can just change my color to be darker. And then I can pull my opacity down right here with this guy, or I can go down to this little slider too. They both work. 
And I could do that. If I feel like I'm getting this double shadow, um, the, we'll get into this in painting, but I could then put in another layer over the top of that. And I could just select that and start to cover up some of those shadows over the top of that. Right? Um, so that it feels, starts to feel cohesive as one, as one shadow, right? So there's a little bit of painting. Again, we'll get into that in the next section. But no, the main idea I want you to know is that this is the multiply tool and it's really great. If I didn't, if I wanted to then paint with this and I didn't want it to be a vector anymore, I can do a few things. I can just make a new layer over the top of it. I can select both of them and then use my merge and that's going to rasterize it for me. I'll have to redo the multiply tool, but I can do that. If I don't want to do that, I can just take that and go up to image, uh, excuse me, layer, and then rasterize. That's kind of a funny, funny term, but rasterize that layer. And it's going to now be an, a layer that I can use any of my other tool painting tools on, right? And that's a great, a great option as well. And I could also, if I wanted to, I could just make a new layer and I could paint this shadow. If I wanted to go and just paint it with a brush over the top. Let's say I just have a big tree shadow or something coming in there. I could paint that tree, that shadow, and then I can multiply that as well and just pull my opacity down. And then I can just go directly into that with an eraser or however I want to, however I want to deal with that, right? So this is nice that I can quickly come and scrub in over the top. Start to get that. Keep in mind that as you can see, these shadows now look different between the blue and what's going on behind that. So I probably would want to come in over the top and start to with some of this other shadow and start to paint over the top of that and adjust that however I want. Right. So again, we're kind of getting into painting a little bit, but just know that the multiply tool is awesome and that usually it means you need to paint over it and then pull the opacity down a little bit. Dark and occasionally works, but usually multiply is what's going to give you a better, a better feel so that it, it pulls your mid, your lights down into the dark range and then maintains some of the, uh, the dark values with some distinction still. So multiply is a great tool for throwing shadows across areas and just darkening up all an area like that you would want to be dark. So great tool. Another, the other light tool that I want to talk about is how to use a, that same idea of either a pen tool shape that I could do a rectangle shape and I could just drop a color in over everything, right? I could make a square over the top of this this way. I could also just make a new layer and go get my paint bucket and just drop that over the top. And now one is a rasterized shape and one is a vector, or excuse me, a, uh, yeah, a vector shape. So I would, if I wanted to edit this, I'd need to make a, to rasterize it with my layer rasterize tool. I could do shape, would do the same thing. But the goal here isn't to show you how to rasterize or vector, um, or make a, a, a vector shape or raster, raster, but rather to show you these other tools. So I can use overlay, Soft light, I can use some of these color tools to basically throw this over the top. And then again, use my opacity to soften up that effect a little bit, but it allows me to shift things tonally into a color space 
that's really fun. And it does it in a way that's global that doesn't work as well if I were to just do the color balance that we talked about before. It kind of does the same thing, right? But color balance is usually going to be a little more subtle. And this is going to be a little more tonal all over the place. Um, so you can see the difference between those two. This color balance is nice. It maintains a lot of those harmonies, but it's more subtle. If I go here, it really is, look how, especially in the sky, the difference of how things are shifting. So, and it allows me to really go hard, hardcore with it. I could do soft light and pull that back. And that's going to be a little closer to what my color balance is going to do. It's just two different ways to do it. Either I can use my color balance and adjust that tool, um, have more control, or I can go with a global overlay. Um, the same as with a, a photography gel. If you took a piece of those clear cellophane um, squares and put it over the top of a photography light to then cast a certain glow, that's all I'm doing. And I'm just adjusting the opacity according to how strong I want it. So I would encourage you just to play with some of these different options here. Sometimes I like one more than the other, and it totally depends on the piece. I, I use them a lot in different ways. And so I would say, don't think that one is better than the other per se. I would just, I always just go and flip through them and say, oh, that does something I didn't expect and try that and then go with it and see what see what happens. So really powerful color shifting tools that are fantastic. So we talked about the multiply tool. We talked about overlaying a color. Now, the last thing I want to talk about are these ones in the middle that we didn't talk about. These lighten, screen, the color dodge, linear dodge, you don't need. I usually don't use these a lot, but screen, I do quite a bit. Now, let me show you what it's good for. For light effects where you want something to come cascading across, this is a great effect. Now we're going to go to the gradient tool. We'll talk about gradients a little more in the next section, but for right now, just know I want you to focus on what the gradient does in the secondary tool, not the gradient tool itself. So I'm going to get the gradient tool. I'm going to show, just pull up a little bit of light. I'm going to pull that across. I'm laying this down over the top of it. It's great, but it just feels kind of like a weird photograph. So once I go to my screen tool, um, then you can see the difference between normal without any adjustment and with adjustment. It maintains a lot of my light value ranges. I can pull down my opacity and it's going to start to feel like light is coming in from the corner right? Like light spilling around there and really starting to influence what's going on. It's a great way to push light direction and also sometimes to use um, a gradient in the with the multiply tool as well that I could use with a dark blue. And I could do bits of of darker shadow and lay that darker, pull that down a little bit, but it allows me to get very quickly a sense of light coming into this piece. Where Where's the light direction here? Yeah, I'm not sure. Here, there's no question about it. It's lighter here and warmer. It's darker here and cooler. So I get this great transition happening across the piece and it's a great, it's a great tool to use. So Multiply is usually a darkening tool. Well, always a darkening tool. And then my screen is always going to be a, a tool for enhancing light. And then overlay, soft light, hard light. These are all things that are going to adjust the color of my piece. So I've got some really powerful tools just right here in my levels um, options that I can scroll through there. There's some other ways to get to those tools too, but generally right here above your levels is where you're gonna to wanna to play with those. And I would definitely recommend you take some time at this point in the course and just try some of these things out. You might wanna wait until we talk about gradients in the next section. That way you'll have one more tool in your um, 
in your toolbox to use them with. So multiply tool, um, lightning tools, darkening tools, and color tools that are in addition to the other just blanket color adjustment tools that we used before. Really powerful stuff and things that you can do without ever having to paint anything over the top of it, just using the information from your photo alone. We'll come back and talk about gradients in just a moment.